Okay, so now that's GitHub. Now we're going to go into Git the tool. So first things first, uh, you want to find out whether it's actually installed on your computer. So if you open up a terminal and just go to the command line and type git space dash dash version, if you get something back, then you have git installed. Um, if it says something like cannot find git, then um, you'll need to go and install it. So that link there, git stmcom slash downloads has loads of different um, downloads for each of the major distributions of Windows, Macs, and Linux. Um, and if you go through there, it has instructions of how to install it on your, on your machine. So once you've got it installed, you can get down to using it. So uh, what, we've created a repository on GitHub. Now you want to clone it to your local computer. So what you do is you click the big green button that says clone or download, and that will bring down a drop down box. Um, and if you click that little copy icon in the corner, then that will copy the URL. <coughs> Then if you open a terminal window, you can use the git clone command. So first thing you want to do is make sure in the directory where you want to put your repository. Then you use git clone followed by the URL which you just copied from GitHub. Sometimes you may find a repository that requires authentication. If that is the case, you can just put your GitHub username just before uh, github.com between the HTTPS slash slash um, and then that will require your password once you press enter. So this is what happens if you do git clone. So um, you type git clone and your URL, press return, and then you'll get some uh, text on the screen. It doesn't really matter necessarily what that means. Um, just know that if it says done, 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 then that's a good thing. Um, and if you type ls to list what's in your directory, you should see your repository name there. So wherever you are, it creates a directory called the repository. So here are a few basic commands that you might use every day. So we've gone through git clone, um, which clone copies a remote repository to your computer. Um, there's git status, which is very useful. It shows the status of your local repository. Git add, that will add changes to git. And then git commit, so that's essentially like a save. So that commits your local your changes locally. And then git push, that puts it back onto GitHub or whatever your remote um, repository is. So we're gonna go through those commands in the context of a sort of an everyday, um, something you might do every day to, to edit and update your files. So getting on with it. Now you've cloned your repository to a computer, we'll go through how to use Git while developing code. So first off, let's add a file. So we're going to change directory into our directory called example repo, and we're going to create a, a file called newfile.py and add some code. So I've just had some very basic print statement here. And then we can check what we've done using git status. So if we do an ls, we now see so we've got a readme, which we had before, and this newfile.py. So if you do git status, it tells you some information about where you are. So it says you're on the master branch, which is the main one, and that you're up to date with the, the uh, remote repository. But it also says there are some untracked files which are highlighted in red. So that's saying there's something here which is different to the current version that you have in your uh, committed history. And it even tells you what to do. So it says git add file to include what be committed. So we'll go through that next. So then you do git add. Uh, that little dot there is important. That means git add everything here, basically. Uh, once you do that, if you type git status again, then it won't say, so before on the last screen it said untracked files. On this screen it says changes to be committed. And you can set up so that your command line shows it in colors. So it would turn green if you've got that set up and red if it's uncommitted. And then what we want to do is we want to essentially save our changes. So we can use git commit minus m. So if we type that the command line, git commit minus m, and then you want to add some useful message to describe what you've done. Um, and if once you press return on that, it will say one file changed, one insertion, and it's created new file. So now if you type git status, it will say you're on the master branch as before, but you're now ahead by one commit from your uh, remote repository. And um, so I use minus M there, and that just means you can add an inline message. So that using the, the, the quotes there, um, if you take, if you don't use minus M, 
then if you've got it set up correctly, it will open up an editor so you can write more lines and maybe format it a bit differently. Um, there's a lot of load there at the bottom, so if it doesn't work, you might need to export your editor, um, but you can find information about that. So the next thing to do is git push. So that pushes it to your remote repository. So in this case, we're talking about GitHub. Um, so if you just type git push, then it tells you some information. You don't need to know what that means. I don't even know what that means, and it doesn't matter. Um, what's important is at the end, it just says that it's done it. Um, and if you type git status, it will say it's up to date with the master branch. So now if you go back to GitHub, you can see that, that new file.py has been added. And the commit message is in the middle bit there. So it says added new file.py to print string. Okay, so now it's going to changing a file. So let's say you want to edit that file now. So I've opened up the new file.py again, and we've changed it to here is some different code. So now if we type git status again, we'll see that it's been modified. And then, so last time we did lots of git statuses just to show you the process, but you don't need to do that every time. So here we've got the full flow. So you've changed the file and you do git add dot. So that adds the file. Then you git commit minus M with your message. So we've said we modified the string to say something different. And that tells you that it's updated it. And then you git push to push it back to GitHub. And then you can see, so again, our message down here is what we just wrote. So modify string to say something different. And up here now it says three commits. So the first commit was adding the readme file. The second commit was adding new file. And the third commit was editing that new file. So if you click on the three commits, it shows you the history. So here is the history of what we've done. And like I said, the first one, with an initial commit, then, so this is why the messages are important. So then you can look back at history, you can see what you've actually done. So it's important to write useful messages that help you when you're looking back. So here's a couple of questions that are commonly asked. Uh, one is, do I always need to clone? And the answer is no. Once you've cloned to your computer, you don't need to do that step again. So the initial clone phase, once you've taken it down from GitHub onto your computer, then it's there and you don't need to clone it again. And one very important one is how often should I commit? And the answer is more often than you think. Um, I had a bit of discussion with my colleagues and we came up with the answer of once you've done one thing that works. So whether that's one bug fix or one new function or one new class, um, one new file, one new feature. So one, one thing, if you can say you've done a thing and it works, then that's when you should commit and write a meaningful message to say what you've done. The more often you commit, the easier it will be to go back and, and see your history. And um, if you find mistakes, it's easier to go back on small and incremental changes rather than waiting until you get to the end of the project, committing everything, and you've got no steps in between. So commit more often than you think. And another thing that is commonly asked is what's the difference between git add, git commit, and git push? So hopefully this slide will help you a little bit. Um, Git add tells you what tells Git what you want it to track. So until you've done Git add, it doesn't know, it's not watching it basically. So that little dot means everything, like I said. Git commit is essentially a save. So that saves the current state of your tracked files with a message. And that saves it in your on your local computer. And then git push, that synchronizes the changes from your local computer to GitHub or whatever other remote service you're using. 